Part, Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and Part 4. Now look at Part 1. Part 1 there will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only, and you will hear a conversation between two people talking about insecticide. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Yes? Oh, good morning, madam. I'm from Pest Away Market Research. I'm doing consumer research in this area. I wonder if you'd mind telling me, do you use Pest Away in your home? Pest Away? Oh, the insecticide thing. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Well, what do you use it for, madam? Fleas, ants, cockroaches, woodworm? Oh, cockroaches. This is an old house, you see, and we often get cockroaches in the kitchen. I tried scrubbing and disinfecting, but it didn't seem to do much good. And then I heard a commercial about Pest Away, so I thought I'd try that. Was that on TV? No, it was radio, one of those early morning shows. You heard it advertised on the radio? Fine. And you say you use it in the kitchen. Do you use it anywhere else in the house? In the bathroom, say? Oh, no. We've never had any trouble anywhere else. We get the odd wasp in the summer sometimes, but I don't bother about them. It's the cockroaches I don't like. Nasty, creepy, crawly things. And you find Pest Away does the trick? Well, yes. It's quite good. It gets rid of most of them. How long have you been using it, madam? Oh, let's see. About two years now, I think. About two years. And how often do you find you have to spray? Oh, I give the kitchen a good spray round the skirtings and under the stove, you know, about every six weeks. Every six weeks or so, I see. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. About every six weeks. Every six weeks or so, I see. Uh, where do you buy your pest away, madam? A supermarket? Chemist? Oh, no. I get it at the little shop at the end of this street. They stock practically everything. It means taking a bus if I want to go to the supermarket. Well, thank you very much, madam. Oh, could I have your name, please? Mrs. Edgerton. Mary Edgerton. That's E-G-E-R-T-O-N. E-G-E-R-T-O-N. And the address? The address is 12 Holly, Peterford. 12 Peterford. And may I ask your age, madam? Oh, well, just put down I'm over 50. As you like, Mrs. Egerton. And occupation? Housewife? Well, I used to be a telephonist before I married. I had a very good job at the post office, but what with a husband to look after and four children to bring up, it doesn't leave you much time, does it? Occupation, housewife. Well, thank you very much for your time, madam. You've been most helpful. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear the education officer in a museum giving a talk to school students who are about to start a one-week work placement in the museum. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Good morning, and welcome. We're really pleased that you're going to be joining us next week for your work placement. Now, each of you will already have met the member of museum staff assigned to supervise you. In this short talk today, I'll be giving you more general information, which will be relevant to all six of you. Your normal working day is nine to five p.m., but on Monday, because it's your first day, we'd like you to arrive at quarter to nine. Please note, though, that you'll finish at the usual time. A lot of you have been asking what you should wear for work. Well, you may have noticed that we're not exactly a formal institution. So you'd really be out of place if you wear smart attire like a suit. If you go out on a trip with us, then we'd like you to wear a museum cap. It has our logo on, and we feel it helps people recognise you. But on a day-to-day -day basis in the museum itself, we say put on your own casual clothing, because you'll be doing lots of dusty, messy work. Now. We don't have an enormous number of rules, but work placement is an excellent preparation for the real world of work, and we expect you to be very punctual and reliable. If you're not well or there's been a hold-up, then what we ask you to do is ring the museum receptionist. He will be in the museum well ahead of opening time, and he'll inform your own personal supervisor in the museum. If you're away for more than one day, we'll inform your school tutor. They'll obviously need to make a note of your absence and follow up if necessary. But most of all, we hope you really enjoy yourselves during the placement. Students say they have a lot of fun, whether it's working with kids in our art workshops held every Monday, or the most popular, when they go out. On our outreach work to residential homes, recording elderly people's memories of school days for our oral history project. So, we hope you feel excited by the prospect of starting next week, and well prepared. Your personal supervisor will be there to help you with our health and safety requirements when you start next week, and your supervisors will also brief you about the background to the museum. Summarizing all the huge amount of information on our website. In the next couple of days, it might be worthwhile if you get hold of evaluations and other notes made by students who've worked with us before. You can get a lot of pointers from them. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions sixteen to twenty. Now, before I finish today, I wanted to help you find your way around the museum. When you start next Monday, the first thing you'll need to do is sign in. Come through the main entrance, and you'll see the main staircase straight ahead. To the right of this is the statue of the horse, and just behind that is a door. Go through that. And that's the sign-in office. Now, on the first day, you'll be working in Gallery One. You'll find this as follows: 
In the central courtyard area, close to the entrance, there's a large chest where visitors put donations for the museum. The door just behind that leads to Gallery 1. The workshop you'll be taking part in starts at 11, but if you want to go in earlier, you can get the key and let yourself in. The key box is quite hard to find. Walk behind reception and it's between the large gallery and the bookshop. I haven't mentioned breaks, um, lunch, etc. Unfortunately, our cafe's closed at the moment, so your best bet is to bring a packed lunch. We tend to have our sandwiches in the kitchen area. Go round the reception desk and you'll see a small circular cabinet. The door to the kitchen area is just behind that. Now, Every day, we put up notices about what's happening in the museum. Your supervisor will brief you, but if you want to check up on details, look on our staff notice board. This is in the corner of the play area, at the back, on the wall of Gallery 3. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help. That is the end of Part 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a group of students, Henry, Joe, Nancy, and Gordon, discussing changes to their work experience placement arrangements. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Look, there's the notice that Professor Jones told us he'd be putting up confirming the details of our work experience placements. But I thought that was already arranged. No, he said he'd have to check with the companies that the days we preferred were okay for them. Let's see if any have changed. Therese is not here today, but her name's first. It says the Uni Bookshop, Friday mornings starting on the 23rd of March. So nothing's changed. I'll let her know. What about Manuel? He's not here either. Is he still going to the music store in the High Street? If it's mainly music, Yes, he's still down for that on Friday afternoons, starting on the 9th. Um, the day's different. It's changed from Tuesday mornings, but that's OK. I'll tell him. He'll really enjoy listening to music all day. Now, where's my name? Henry. Here it is. I'm going to the beauty shop, and I said I preferred Thursday afternoons. Oh, good, that seems okay. And my start date hasn't changed either. Joe, what day did you opt for? I'm going to Highway Hotels on Monday mornings. Yes, that's okay. And starting on Monday the 12th of March. Oh, has that been changed? Okay, I was scheduled to start the week before. I'll just make a note of that. What about me, Henry? Have I still got the Explore Travel Service on Wednesday mornings? Just a minute. Where's your name? Mm, let's see. Nancy. 
Okay, here it is. Explore travel on Wednesdays, yes, but afternoons and starting date is Wednesday the 14th of March. Has the date changed? No, not the date, just the time, which is fine. I'll get to sleep in. You lazy thing, Nancy. Chris's name is next on the list. Gorgeous Gowns Fashions. What a name. Yes, it sounds good, doesn't it? I'm hoping he'll bring me some free samples. So, has he still got Wednesday mornings? Yes, Wednesday mornings starting on the 14th of March. OK, I'll tell him when I see him tonight that his arrangements haven't changed. Gordon, what about you? I chose that software company that makes computer games. I can't remember its name, but I asked for Tuesday afternoons. Oh, oh yes. Here it is. Games to go on Wednesday mornings. There's a note here saying they have their weekly staff meetings on Tuesday afternoons, so that wouldn't be much use to you. That's why they've changed it to Wednesdays, starting on the 21st of March, so you can see their working setup. OK, I'm glad they've changed it. I don't think I'd want to sit through a meeting every week. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now, as the conversation continues, Answer questions 27 to 30. Can someone remind me what time we have to get to our placement in the afternoons? It says here, mornings start at 9am and afternoon sessions at 1pm. Oh, that's a shame. I thought Professor Jones was going to change it to 9.30am and 1.30pm. Yes, he did say that he'd try to make it later, but obviously that wasn't possible. By the way, just in case, what happens if we're ill or something and can't make it? Do we phone the college or the place we're going to? I think we have to phone the company first and then the college. Didn't you get the information sheet about work experience at our last seminar? No, I missed it because I had to go to the dentist. What else did it say? Well. We have to do a total of 24 hours altogether, so if we miss one of the arranged sessions, we have to organise another time to make up the hours. And he gave us details of the presentation we have to give about our work experience. Oh really? What do we have to do? In week 10, we each have to give a presentation to the class about the company we've been with. It's 30% of our final mark for this subject. So it's going to be a lot of work. Yes, he's expecting us to do a lot of research while we're there so that we can outline the history of the company, its management structure, number of employees, other branches, etc. And he said we should use lots of visuals such as diagrams and flowcharts during the presentation. Yes, and we should also include what we did each week the different departments of the company or positions that we observed and try to relate what we saw to our studies so far. He gave examples like management style, accounting systems, information technology and so on. You were right. It sounds like lots of work. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a talk about security in the UK. Listen to the talk and complete the statements below. 
First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. In large cities, for instance London, and crowded places such as airports and stations, there is the risk of theft. We do not want you to suffer the distress of losing important documents and valuables as soon as you step onto British soil. So here are some important do's and don'ts. Don't carry more cash than you need for daily expenses. If you stay at a hotel, do ask the manager to keep large sums of cash, documents and valuables in the hotel safe and give you a receipt for them. This is a free service. If cash is stolen, it is very unlikely to be recovered. Do keep separately a note of the serial numbers on your traveller's cheques, so if they are lost you can inform your bank. Do take particular care of bank and credit cards. Do carry wallets and purses in an inside pocket or a handbag. Don't ever leave a bag unattended and make sure it is securely fastened when you are carrying it. Do carry jewellery and valuables such as cameras, radios and typewriters on you or with you and keep a note of any serial numbers. Do take special care of your passport, travel tickets and other important documents. Documents are at risk particularly at airports and stations where it is obvious that most people will be carrying them. Do make a note and keep it in a safe place of the number of your passport, its date and place of issue. This makes replacement easier if you are unlucky enough to lose it. If you don't want to carry heavy luggage around with you, you can leave it in a luggage office at most large stations and pick it up later. Keep the receipt so that you can reclaim your luggage. Check the opening hours or you may find your luggage locked away when you need it again. If you lose any of your luggage in transit, take this up immediately with the officials of the airline or shipping line. But don't worry too much. 98% is found within three days. If you lose anything, go first to the lost property office at the airport or station, as it may have been found and handed in. If you lose your luggage in the street, or suspect it has been stolen rather than gone astray, find the nearest policeman who will advise you what to do. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.